Hi everyone, welcome back. So in the previous lecture, we discussed about the effectiveness of fiscal policy under the flexible exchange rate. And now we will discuss about the effectiveness of monetary policy under the flexible exchange rate and the trade policy. So we are starting with monetary policy. under flexible exchange rate. Monetary policy we have already discussed. It basically means that there is uh, whatever the change is being there, that is by changing the money supply by the central bank. So, uska wo hamari kitni effective hoti hai in order to increase or decrease the output that we are going to discuss. Let us draw, draw the diagram. So, here on the x-axis, we take output or income. And on the y-axis, we take nominal exchange rate. Then we have a straight vertical open economy LM curve, which is being denoted by LM star. And we have a downward sloping open economy IS curve that is denoted by IS star. So this intersection, this intersection points gives us the existing nominal exchange rate and the existing equilibrium output level. Now we say that suppose central bank increases the money supply. Now when central bank increases the money supply, there will be excess supply of money in the economy and the immediate effect will be the rightward shift in the LM curve. Rightward shift in the LM curve. So this we can say that there is a parallel rightward shift. So this becomes LM star 2 and we shift from LM1 to LM2. As a result of this, now the intersection point is this E2. Earlier it was E1. So now we can see here that our exchange rate, nominal exchange rate has reduced. That is there is a depreciation. Also, we can see that our output or income in the economy has increased. Let us understand that why, if you see the previous uh, lesson, the fiscal policy is not effective in the flexible exchange rate, whereas the monetary policy is effective. Fiscal policy is not effective in the reasons we last lesson. Mein discuss kiye the. Monetary policy is effective in the last lesson. We will Now we say, that Muller Fleming model is for a small open economy. In this small open economy, we said that money supply has increased. Money supply increase hone ka matlab hai, excess supply of money hai, and portfolio disequilibrium hai. Portfolio disequilibrium ki wajay se, ab logo ke paas Paise ziyada hai and demand for money is less. So people will start demanding more bonds. As they start demanding more of bonds, the price of bonds will increase and in turn the interest rate on these bonds will reduce. Now this domestic interest rate, because this has reduced, so this domestic interest rate becomes less than the foreign interest rate. And when this happens, there will be capital outflow from the economy because people from our uh, country, because people will try to invest where they are getting more interest rate. So when there is capital outflow, this will lead to depreciation of our currency. Okay, And when there is capital outflow, there is depreciation, which means that now the nominal exchange rate has reduced, as we can see in this diagram also, that it has reduced from E1 to E2. When this happens, it means that now our exports are cheaper. And exports are cheaper, it means that there will be an increase in the demand for exports. With the increase in the demand for exports, net exports will increase. 
and when there will be an increase in the net exports, finally the income or output will increase. Why? Because we say in the open economy, Y is equal to C plus I plus G plus NX. So when this net exports increases, this income also increases. So this is the reason that the decline in the nominal exchange rate, that is the depreciation, will lead to an increase in the output and income. So we say that thus monetary policy is effective under flexible exchange rate. The third type of policy that we need to do under flexible exchange rate is trade policy. But love, government puts changes karke in its trade policy tries to influence the output or income level. Now here we are going to use two part vertical diagram. Okay. So in the first part we take net exports schedule that is on the x axis we take net exports and on the y axis we take nominal exchange rate. We know that there is an inverse relationship between nominal exchange rate and net exports. We have discussed in previous lessons. If you are not clear about this, you can go and revisit them. So that is why this net exports is a downward sloping curve and we denote it by NX1. Using this net exports, we make the second part of the diagram where on the x-axis we take income or output and on the y-axis we take exchange rate. So here we say that this is a vertical LM curve, open economy LM curve. And from this NX schedule, we derived open economy IS curve. So we get that this is our nominal equilibrium exchange rate and this is the output level. This is our present scenario. Now, when we say trade policy, suppose we are saying that suppose government expenditure or you know government does something say it imposes the import tariff or import quota so we say that government tries to reduce the demand for imported goods by imposing import quota or import tariff. Now, when this happens, the net exports will increase. Why? Because if we have import tariff or import quota, then x minus m will reduce. Imports reduce ho as a result of which nx will increase. So, at the same exchange rate, the net exports will increase and there will be an upward shift in this net exports. Now, when net exports increases, there will be an increase in the aggregate demand and this will lead to an increase in or shift in the IS curve towards the right. So, this is our new IS curve. As a result of which we can see that nominal exchange rate has increased. But we can also see that this output level is same. Y remains same. Now why does this remain same? Because as net exports increases, there is an increase in income, money demand increases as a result of which portfolio disequilibrium, interest rate increases, which means that domestic interest rate becomes greater than foreign interest rate, and thus there will be capital inflow. And capital inflow means that there is appreciation of the nominal exchange rate, and this leads to decline in net exports, and thus our income or output reduces. So whatever positive benefit that we derive by imposing the import quota 
or import tariff. All that has been driven out by the decline in the net exports due to appreciation of nominal exchange rate. With this, we have completed the Mundi Flaming model, effectiveness of various policies under the fixed exchange and under the flexible exchange rate. So we have seen that fiscal policy under flexible exchange rate was ineffective, monetary policy is effective and trade policy is ineffective. This is the conclusion that we can draw. In the next lesson, we will discuss about the model flaming model and effectiveness of various policies under the uh, fixed exchange rate. Sorry, under uh, yeah, we flexible exchange rate. Me kiya hai. Ham fixed exchange rate me karenge abhi. So fixed exchange rate me bhi hume ye three policies karni hai. That is fiscal policy, monetary policy, and trade policy. All the best for your preparation, and uh, I'll upload the next lesson soon. In case of any doubts, you may ask. Take care, everyone.